Hi, I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies and today we're, I'm setting up a new bow for indoor archery. So basically it's different. The red one is my target bow that I normally use for target archery and the gold one's going to be an indoor bow. Now the first question you're going to have, what well, I'd want to have, is why not use the red one for, for indoor archery? Now there's lots of reasons. Now last year I actually shot the red bow for indoor archery and I was shooting really well coming to the Nationals. And the night before the Nationals, I saw a picture of the indoor venue and it was pitch black. There was one light in the, in the venue where we're shooting, which was a very small light, which was in the middle. And I went, I'm not going to be able to see the target that I'm aiming at. So the night of the Nationals, I physically changed my bow around so I could see. And I changed my arrows to fat arrows. And my scores, I was shooting before the Nationals with skinny arrows around 299s, 300s. And come the Nationals, it bombed for me. So, and on that, talking about the difference between indoor arrows or an indoor bow and an outdoor bow, I want to talk about some of the differences, how I've set up this bow, and then tuning the bow and what's different to my target bow and why I'm setting this one up differently. So the first reason why I wanted to set up a completely new bow is I didn't want to change my target bow. Now with my target bow indoors, I'm currently shooting around 299 out of 300. You know, occasionally I'm shooting a 300, but 298s, 299s is what I normally shoot indoors. And I'm pretty happy with that. I'm actually happy shooting 290, but I'm shooting well with this bow. So when I grabbed my new Victory Arrows, I shot extremely well. I shot bare shafts straight into one another. So I didn't want to change that bow for indoors like I did last year. So last year I put fat arrows in. I shot gold tips 9.3s. And my highest score with fat arrows was 294, 295 out of 300. So with the fat arrows, I was actually shooting lower scores. So my hope was shooting fat arrows that I'd have more line cutters and get more X's. Now that didn't actually didn't occur for me because the arrows weren't shooting as well. So this year coming into the Nationals, which are only four weeks away, I thought what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a new bow, which is expensive. And I'm going to use fat arrows. I'm going to set up this bow, tune the bow for the Nationals. I'm going to have a complete setup and not muck around with my target bow. Now, that way, if I don't shoot the big scores with my indoor bow that I've set up for indoor, I can just revert back to my target bow because I know I'm shooting good scores. Now, the same rule applies with a recurve. I'm shooting a recurve a lot and the same deal. I'm going to get that. I'm setting that up at the moment indoors. When I say setting up, it takes a takes a long time and then I'm going to actually set up another bow with fat arrows with that and feathers probably and see what sort of scores I can shoot with that and I've got three to four weeks to do that so we're going to talk about what I've done with the gold bow where we're up to the arrows and what I've gone through so far to set myself up now I'm going to start with the arrows now with indoor archery there are two types of indoor ar archery there's the Vegas Indoor, which is an out of 10. Now you're allowed 27 thickness arrows for that. Now these are 23. So the 23, these are a Victory NVX arrow and that 23. Now that's for World Archery. So for FETA, World Archery, whatever you call it, which is the inner 10, you're only allowed to shoot up to shafts which are a 23 thickness. But for Vegas, you're allowed to shoot 27. Now, I'm not going to set up a bow for 27 and for 23 because I just can't be bothered. There is an arrow rest called the Spot Hog Edge um, Swap, which allows you to swap the arrow rest, just screw it in and screw it off to allow for different thickness shafts. But I'm going to explain why I didn't do that. Um, and that's what the rest is designed for. So. I just want to talk about the process that I've gone through and what I'm going to do. So let's start with the arrows. The arrows I've gone for are victories, 23s. Now the reason I chose these arrows over a, let's say a gold tip 9.3 or an Eastern Aluminium or a Carbon Express, oh god I'm forgetting the name, sorry, X Cutter, which is all 23 thickness arrows. Okay, so I had success with these arrows with my target arrows. Instant success. And when I say instant success, my scores picked up and they were cheaper. Now with these arrows, I've only been selling them for two weeks. 
I had massive success in two, two to three weeks with Victory Arrows and I've given them, when I say I've given them, people have brought them and they've given me feedback to say they're shooting their personal best with them. And actually I gave a set to a guy in WA and I said, tell me how they go. And he said, look, Stephen, I'm shooting great. I'm shooting my best scores with them. So as a result, I thought, well, if I work for him and he's pretty honest with me, I can then, I'll get myself a set. So I chose these. Now, I chose the Elite version, which is 0.001, um, as opposed to the 0.006. Not because it's straighter, because I think they'll both shoot the same. And the guy in WA, Vaughan, said actually he shoots the same scores with the 0.006 and the 0.001. I chose the 0.001 because it's yellow. My bow's yellow. Uh, the veins are yellow. So I'm, I'm carrying through a yellow theme. Now, it may sound silly, and it is silly. Um, if I was shooting the red bow for indoor, I'd be getting the 0.006s because I actually don't think there's much difference between them. Um, the price point difference, let's say $70 a dozen. Um, and for me, $70 a dozen, it is $70 a dozen, but for me it doesn't really worry me that much. Um, but about these arrows versus the 9.3s, first off that's spined. So what that means is these are spined at 350, um, which is what I shoot for my target setup, 350s. I've got a 150 grain point in the end, so they're going to shoot like my target arrows. Now I've put 3 inch um, ice veins on which are a low profile. Now a lot of indoor arrow um, archers will be shooting longer veins. And basically this should shoot just like my target setup. Now with my bow, we're going to go through the bow and what I've chose to put on it to set it up. Um, now the sight I've selected um, is the XL Achieve sight. I really like the sight, it's carbon bar. Very easy to adjust, you can detach the scope. Um, I really like the sight, I've never had a problem with one. Very simple, quite expensive, around a $500 sight. The scope I chose was a shrewd um, scope. I really like the quality of the lens, I like the way it's screwed in. Um, I haven't played with the different color dots. I can see the yellow fine, so I'm not gonna change, I'm not gonna change it. I put a small black dot on, because I think the black corresponds with the yellow quite well of the target. It's actually slightly smaller dot than I use for my target setup as far as the dot size. Now the reason I chose that was because I was holding pretty good with the bigger dot and being indoor I want to hit the X and I'm basically the size of my dot currently covers up most of the yellow so I wanted to make it smaller. This is just me trying stuff, okay? This is just me talking about how I've set up the bow. Now I've actually gone for a bow which is fractionally lighter, so I'm going to shoot this bow at about 53 pounds. My target bow is close to 60 pounds. And I'm going to try shooting at 75% versus 65%. I may change that as time goes on and based on how my scores shoot. Now the stabilizer I, I selected was a Shrewd Onyx. Now the reason I picked a Shrewd, when I shot it in the review, I got a little bit of vibration with it. And I spoke to, I'm sorry, I forgot his name from Shrewd. I'm oh, sorry, I deal with lots of people. It's, anyway, I forget his name. It starts with L and his surname's S. Um, I said to him, look, I'm getting a little bit of vibration. I don't feel in the shot. And he said, oh, if you just go back to a shorter stabilizer, you won't feel it. Well, you won't, the vibration will just disappear. But with that, only in an archery shop, I want to get to know my products. So I picked the Onyx stabilizer because I want to see how to get rid of that vibration. Now I fitted it to this bow and you'll see when I shoot it, the vibration doesn't actually exist. Same stabilizer, same weights, same everything. Um, the vibration just doesn't exist now. So for me, what's different between the yellow bow and the red bow? Um, and the difference is the V-bar. This time the stabilizer goes straight onto the bow as opposed to going onto the V-bar setup. Now in tests I've done before with stabilizers, I've found that reduces the shock and it did reduce the shock on, this on the stabilizer. The Onyx was very light, shock absorbing, and I thought I'd look pretty good. Now the I did like the Atomic stabilizers, but they didn't have the weights, they didn't have the thread, the thread thing, so I was like, well, Onyx has got it. 
Now the rest I've shot, now all my rests on all my bows are always spot hog and I always use a Premier because it's nice and simple and it's pretty affordable at about $100. Now I've chose the prong system, which is two prongs, um, and the arrow goes straight through that. Now I've chose the prongs versus the um, blade rest because with a blade, with a heavier arrow, sometimes it can bounce and I don't want any bouncing occurring for an indoor setup. I just basically want to shoot my arrows and get off the shooting line. Um, so I want to keep my life simple. Keep life simple is a good um, good scenario. Now the scope I've chosen, like I said, was a um, shrewd scope. Now this time I've gone for a six power because I want to see the the yellow bigger. Now to, to make the six power clear, I've gone for a specialty peep and I've gone for a number one clarifier and I've gone for a bigger aperture size, so I think it's a 364th. Now I've gone for a 364th aperture size because I'd need more light because the venue where I'm shooting is very dark. The, sorry, the size of the scope I'm shooting is 29 millimeter because I want a small scope because I don't want to basically look at much what I'm, the target I'm shooting at small, so I want a small scope. I'm shooting a basic D loop, um, my normal release aid, the bow is exactly the same draw length as my target bow, um, which is 28 and a half inches. Um, I fitted V-bars down low. Now these are the PSE V-bars. Now the reason I picked the PSE V-bar is because I already had a set. The PSE V-bars are cheap and with a V-bar you don't get much vibration anyway. So I was like, the Onyx ones are ballpark 150. I need two of them, they're $300. I already had the PSE ones, which are around $70 each. So, and you're not going to feel any vibration through a short rod. So I've just added um, seven ounces of weight on the back of each V-bar and I've got eight ounces at the front. Sorry, nine ounces at the front because I put a little um, gold shrewd weight on. So that's basically the setup that I've got. Now what I want to do, so far this morning, so I've made, I fletched the arrows, I fitted the 100, 150 grain points as opposed to the 120 I thought my target points are 140, so I thought 150 will make the arrows flex a little bit more because I've actually dropped the poundage, so I thought that would be better as far as spines concerned on the arrow. Now, I've spent some time this morning bare shaft tuning the bow and it was a nightmare, and in fact, my groups were horrible. So, in fact, I was quite depressed. So I was shooting golds, nump sevens in the target. I don't shoot sevens. I was. I was shooting pretty much beginners were shooting better than me this morning when I set up this bow so that's where I'm up to so what I want to take you through now is where I'm up to now in this video so I'm pretty happy I've moved the arrow rest around with bare shaft tuning um, in fact I found no difference at all with moving the arrow rest so my bare shafts were high my fletched arrows were low I moved my rest down like it said in the charts it made no difference whatsoever so I moved all my bow back to standard. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to just try some basic group tuning and some bare shaft tuning. I've removed the stop down the bottom because I figured it may be part of the reason why the unfletched arrows were different to the fletched arrows or it could be spine. So there was a couple of things going on in my head. Now as a beginner and as a recreational archer, when you buy a bow, and this is an expensive bow, a PC Expression. And the reason I chose an Expression is because I already shoot an Expression. I have had success with an Expression. And when I change bows from one bow to another, I just wanted the same, same setup. I wanted the bow to feel the same. And I, I shoot the Expression every day, and I've been shooting it for two years, the red one. And I love it. I really do. I, when I first reviewed the bow, I wasn't that wrapped in it. And when I shot the yellow bow today without stabilizers, there was a fair bit of shock in it. But now I've set it up with the weights, the stabilizers, it feels pretty good to shoot. Like it's a completely different bow. So when you shoot a bow and test a bow, it's always good to have one sort of setup that you can try and feel because the bow will feel different, the balance will be different, either for hunting or for target. Um, because this bow feels fantastic now. So let's go and shoot the bow and see how it shoots. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna shoot some arrows. Um, we're standing about 10 meters from the target, bare shaft. 
Um, I've taken the dampener off the bow to see where the bear shaft actually shoots. So we're going to shoot a fletch one first. Now, <coughs> sorry, now I've chosen 75% versus 65, which I normally shoot for target because I want to basically be able to aim longer. I am finding with six with 75 that sure I can aim longer, but I feel like I'm getting more movement on the target. Might be I don't practice as much with the compound, but I have shot big scores this, this exact week. So and I see, I feel that I'm getting more drift. So just bear that in mind. Now with the expression, it comes with 75 and 65%. So I may change back to 65. The other reason why I wanted to shoot 75 for indoor is because at the competition I will be shooting recurve and compound. And last year's nationals I had massive pain in my shoulders through knots because I've been shooting so much. And I was basically in constant pain, like it was like almost tears. It was pretty much tears uh, to shoot. So this year I want to just take my body easier. Um, and not be in so much pain so hence lighter poundage bigger let off just make it easier on my body now when I shoot notice the onyx stabilizer yet for me I don't notice any vibration at all with it so the same weights same everything so now this is the bear shaft Now one of the big questions I get in my shop from customers is they can't tune their bow. And they go, what could it be that I can't tune my bow? Now I've spent, I've been doing archery since I was 13, 12, and I've tuned so many bows. But I've spent this morning maybe three hours. The recurve I'm still tuning and I, I tinker with the with left and right I tinker with arrow points I mean you might get it just perfect straight off the straight off the bat and one of my staff members says to customers don't worry about tuning worry about shooting and he's exactly right because if you shoot more you're always going to shoot better than than tuning your bow and and with that what what we mean you can't tune your bow unless everything's perfect if your grips wrong you're not going to be able to tune your bow so make sure your techniques correct before you even start tuning and that sort of comes with practice so you've got to have good technique first so I have people come to my shop and they go oh, again left or right tears or this isn't shooting right I shoot their bow and I shoot it shoots absolutely perfect so and that's because of the technique they, that they have so just bear that in mind now this is the other bear shaft Let's go and have a look at that. Okay, so we're up here at the target. These are my unfletched arrows. Now, when I had this string stop on the bow, my unfletched arrows were coming up here and I couldn't do anything to stop it. Um, here, that's spot on. So I spent uh, one and a half hours, easy, moving my arrow rest up and down left and right and why did I move left and right because I was getting a slight left and right thing but it was only minor and it was making no difference so I moved it all back to center I took the string stop off 
bang. So, take the string stop off your bow. Um, pretty happy with that. So what we're going to do now, we're going to shoot the bow at 18 meters and see how my fletched arrows group. Now with the victory arrows, they are spine aligned. What that means is they're lined up along that mark to have the same spine. Now I'm not sure if that's why they shoot so good, but they do shoot good. Now on this target, we make these targets and I'm not having to push for them. They're filled with um, plastic inside. So when you get, this is only a new target. So when you get the penetration like this and they're penetrating too far, just stick some more stuff in into it. Uh, it can be plastic, materials, clothing. Um, I used to use fly screen, was really good. To basically just stop it because it's penetrating too far at the moment or compress it down. So I'm going to compress it down between the shots and next end we'll see how this target holds up. But basically it's shade cloth which is sewn together with a zipper and it's filled with a yeah, basically shrink wrap material so that we're going to put more more compression and more stuff to so these arrows thing but happy with the bear shaft so now let's do some group testing and see how it groups at 18. okay so we're at 18 now to see how this how the expression shoots or how i shoot at 18 meters with the new bow um, now one of the questions i would ask why would you be setting up a complete new bow for indoor versus when you're shooting really well with your existing target bow for indoor with thin arrows? The answer to it is there's not a lot of difference between the top archer and a lower archer. I mean a good shot is still a good shot. Um, Stefan Hansen shoot, shot skinny arrows to win the NFFA championships. Shot a perfect score with skinny arrows. What you're trying to do is buy yourself a couple of points and hopefully move yourself up the ranks by a couple of points. Um, I prefer practicing with skinny arrows, but I'm literally hoping to pick a couple of points with fatter arrows and that's it. I still need to shoot well. And for me, what I, what I was looking for primarily with this setup was a lighter bow um, a different pin, a different scope setup, and yeah, basically just a different setup as far as scope, arrow rest because of more weight, and trying to buy a couple of points with the fatter arrow. So let's see how it goes. Now the bow sounds good too, so when I say it sounds good, I think with the fatter arrows and the heavier points it quietens the bow down, so to me it sounds really good. Now when I shot this morning in my indoor shooting range, which is at the shop, I was shooting terrible, okay? And I've got no idea how these arrows are gonna go. And what it made me think of when I was shooting this morning, I was shooting so bad. I was thinking about the guy who did the Hoyt review and he said he brought himself, well, he's a Hoyt shooter. He brought himself a Hoyt Reveal and he goes, I shot it the first time today and I shot a perfect 300 with 29 or 30 X's. And I still think to myself, BS, because um, no one shoots that well. And he sure, surely hasn't won Vegas, because even the guys who win Vegas, 27 X's is good. And I figure there's only probably a few people in the world who can shoot, you know, 27 X's. And you're not, not going to do it with your first time, first set up on the bow on the first day. You generally got to tinker with the stuff a little bit. And with a new bow, it requires you to build your confidence. 
with my red target bow. I'm extremely confident with that thing. I've been shooting it for two years. It's never failed me. I know it. It knows me. It's like with a new bow, it's it takes time to settle in. So, which is why I picked basically the same bow for the indoor bow. That one hit the other arrow. I should say the sights were out to the left marginally and I haven't adjusted it so I expect the group to be out to the left. Um, actually I will move my sight out to the left a little bit. I'm definitely shaking more with this bow than the red one. Um, I feel like I've got the same weight on it. It's definitely hold easier to hold back. But my little black dot is moving between the 9 and the 10. So with the red bow, it was sitting on the 10 when I'm shooting a lot. So I'm not sure what the grips are going to look like, but let's go and see in a sec. The bow's feeling nice to shoot. It just, when I shoot it, just jumps forward a little bit in my hand. Feels good. Last arrow and we'll go and see how they grouped. Now on a couple of things about shooting, I'm shooting a back tension release aid. I had several questions this week on back tension release aids. I'm going to do a video on them. When you're pulling it back, make sure the finger, this thing, the silver thing, is pointed towards the target. So you don't punch yourself in the mouth. That's the easiest way I can explain it. The second thing this week is your grip when you're holding the bow. The hand grip, in the center there is your lifeline make sure it's on the left hand side of the bow because i did have a guy derail his bow twice this week so let's go and see how the arrows are okay so i'm up here at the target and my arrows are out to the left now my grouping i definitely hit one arrow my grouping is not as good as my skinnies okay there's no question at all like yeah, that one's a little bit high. Would they, if I adjust my sights, would they all be 10s? Probably. But I have, I do not have the confidence as not in the bow. And I, you know, I hear Alex Whiffler talk. He goes, look, I've got complete confidence in the bow. It's not the bow, it's him. And this is the exact way I feel. Because the bow itself, I'm happy with the way the bow feels. Happy with these arrows. I'm happy with everything. What I'm not happy with, I need to sight the bow in obviously better. It's a new scope. It's a new dot. It's a new stabilizer. It's a new everything for me. New arrows. I've got to build my confidence up. I've got to experiment to make the pin sit in the center more um, because I'm wobbling around a bit. Now that could be the higher let off. Honestly, I don't, I'm not quite sure. I'm going to have to experiment with it. So over the next three to four weeks leading up to the nationals, I'm going to be shooting the red bow and the yellow bow, trying to bring this group into the middle and I'm going to be shooting scores with both bows. So I'm going to be shooting scores with the red bow to make sure I'm still shooting what I normally shoot. And I'm going to be shooting scores with the yellow bow to see 
what bow I'm shooting better scores with. And that was my concept of having two bows. I'm going to shoot scores with the yellow bow, see what I shoot, and I'm going to shoot scores with the red bow to see what I shoot. Then come the day of the Nationals, I'll be shooting the bow which I shoot the highest scores with. Now, I went to the Nationals last year and one of the guys who owns another archery shop said to people who are shooting skinny arrows, he goes, that's going to cost you five or six points shooting skinny arrows. And I thought to myself, I didn't say anything, it's, it will cost you five or six points if I shoot in groups like this as opposed to my skinnies, because these groups are not good enough. It's not as good as I shoot with my skinny um, VAPs. If you saw my review I did on the VAPs, they were much tighter than this. The group was much tighter. And yes, it's me, and I've got to build confidence as a six times scope versus a four times scope, and all that stuff. But that's what part of archery is. With my recurve, I sit there and I slug away Every night, every night I'm shooting here in the dark. I'm slugging away because I hope that in four, to, four weeks time, I've got it right. I may not have it right by the competition, but that was the plan. It was a plan in January, it was a plan in December, and a plan in November to be set for this tournament come June. And hopefully I am. I mean, I'm stronger than I was before, but that's what it's about. It's not like you just go out there and grab my bow, the Hoyt, for the first time and I shoot a great score, which is just amazing by myself. I don't do that. This is what I normally shoot like. This is what I shoot like in the shop. This, I'll shoot a little slightly better in the tournament. But, you know, when people say that stuff, it just gets on my nerve because it's not sending the right message to customers. It's not sending the right message to shooters that people shoot big scores. They don't. They might occasionally, they might shoot a big score. The number of 300 scores I've shot indoor, I think it's four, maybe three. Total, that's it. And I shoot it every single day. Um, last year at the Nationals, there was one person who shot one 300. Out of all the hundreds of people who shot, there was one 300 shot. There was no back-to-back -back 300 shot. So... All these people who say, oh, I shoot 300 all the time. Nah, do you know what? It's really hard to do. It's really hard to shoot all your arrows in the center. So that's the thing about target archery. Um, people go, oh, you know, target archery is really boring. No, it's, yeah, it is, but to put all those arrows in the center, it's hard work. And the hard work is what, you know, you're looking for and what you're driving towards. It's your goal and you've got to work towards it. And that's why I sit out here at night time when it's freezing. That's why I spend two hours setting up my bow and I'll continue setting up my bow and playing with it and getting the, it to sit better. And I'll sit here for probably another couple of hours shooting it now in the cold. So I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. That's my indoor setup and I hope it's just giving you a bit of an idea. All my arrows are not in the gold. Um, it's unrealistic to think they would be. The time I grabbed those VAPs and they all went in center, that was just pure ass, and I was really, really lucky. Um, and the bow was kind of set up already because that was the type of arrow I shot before. So I got lucky there. It's just shot dead, dead perfect. Um, but the bow was a two-year-old bow. It's been set up for two years. It's never been changed. This is a brand new, brand new bow. So anyway, I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. Enjoy your archery shoot lots and remember it's not easy to put all your arrows in the gold you've got to work towards it and you've got to play around and there's no quick answers for this it's like life you've just got to work towards what you want to achieve so thank you for watching and have a nice day thank you bye